So here's the Velvet Hammer. Good morning. The uh, studio audience is excited that you are here. They always love to hear from the Velvet Hammer. Uh, you know, I, I would like to start this off, if we can, Gene, with uh, just a little comment or editorial or whatever about Florida. First of all, Florida did it right. They did the election right. We had the results from Florida by 9 o'clock on uh, Tuesday evening. Perfect, re you know, perfect results uh, all in, no questions asked. You also had a real red wave in Florida. It was amazing what happened in Florida as far as Republicans getting elected. And even the counties that voted Republican that have never done that or haven't done that since uh, maybe 2000. So congratulations, Florida's doing it right. You're part of that. You're, you're a former elected official in Florida. You're, you keep up with what's going on down there. I even saw where the, the, uh, the, the, their uh, attorney general down there got reelected. She was being challenged. Of course, the governor was being challenged. The, the Marco Rubio, the senator from down there, was being challenged. So it was a, it was a great night for Florida. Thank you for having me again. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, glad, I'm glad. I, I can't believe just how, well, if Florida can count 7.5 million votes in less than four hours, how come Arizona and Nevada and a handful of other states are taking weeks, if not months, to count? What is it that I can tell you is that the early voting um, antics don't exist here. There's a, there's a clear discipline, specific rules, and a specific process for everybody to follow on early voting. I direct you again to the second Bill of Rights, my 11 amendments I propose to the United States Constitution that addresses voting. If you want to copy and paste Florida's rules and do it at the state level in 49 other states, have at it. But there's no quite look mail in balloting for someone who's out of the country. I may even uh, suggest we uh, curtail that. But this uh, these ballot drop boxes, uh, recorded cameras on them or not, are nothing more than an an inducement, an incentive to cheat and jam the uh, the the ballot boxes with illegal ballots prematurely. Is it no small coincidence, Michael, that in the states where there are problems today, they are blue states or purple states, they are not states that are strong Republicans? Well, I would agree with that. And and when you talk about mail-in ballots, I mean, look, I, I, so my wife's cousin and her husband were with us this past weekend. And we started talking about Florida and the elections and stuff like that because, uh, well, they think kind of like we do. They're they're from the Panhandle. They're around uh, around the Destin area, and so they said, you know what? It's just great because Florida. Here's what you do: you just you just go down to the courthouse whenever you've got a break, and you just go vote early voting. You just give them your ID. You vote. They put it in the box. They count it. You're done. Now, mail-in ballots, on the other hand. When you send ballots out to vacant addresses, when you send ballots to people that are in nursing homes, let's just say, that are not possibly uh, capable of doing something like that, but well, you're just asking for trouble, right? Of course you are. If you rented an apartment six years ago and the current occupant of that apartment gets a ballot addressed to me in my name uh, at that address, and six other people who may have rented there in, in, in the meantime since then uh, tells me that the voter rolls and the registered voters on, on those voter rolls are substantially outdated. And when one supervisor of election under a secretary of state in anywhere USA, pick Nebraska versus Mississippi versus Florida, each we're relying on their credibility and their uh, methodologies in making sure that those voter rolls are maintained properly. Begs the question that there is room in this governance for a national consistent uh, path for voting. Hey, we have 
engineering standards for highways that you know about in Mississippi, Mississippi that are similar to engineering standards for highways in Florida and all other 48 states. Why can there not be an engineering standard for voting? That doesn't deny each and every state from its right to manage the voting process. It merely creates a uniform standard for all of us to follow in voting. Do you remember last week we were talking about um, had we known uh, had had we not voted early up in uh, Pennsylvania and had the chance to witness Fetterman uh, uh, against Oz? We may not have uh, voted early for Fetterman. We may have been um, uh, thinking twice about whether the cognition of that guy, speech impediment or not, whether the cognition of that guy was sufficient, was capable of being a United States senator for six years in Pennsylvania. Shame on us for having such disparate systems based on a state-by-state -state basis throughout this nation. It's causing terrible confusion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so so we've got to do something about the way elections are held in this country. Now, one issue that we have, Gene, is that the Constitution plainly states that the states themselves will handle the elections, how they do it. So there would have to be a change in the Constitution to do that, wouldn't there? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's one of my 11 amendments in the second Bill of Rights I propose. It specifically addresses a uniform standard by which we all follow in, um, in voting. It doesn't mean that we're pulling any authority away from the states in managing it, as the Constitution suggests. It simply means that we're all on the same playing field to avoid the Fetterman Oz debacle a few uh, last week in the debate, you know, and and then there's and, and putting aside that for a minute, look at what happened with um, Hochul, governor elect, uh, governor elect Hochul up in New York State. You know, she wins uh, uh, with his a historic level of failure going on in that state, and. Uh, uh, you know, then you got in one of the congressional districts, a gentleman, a Republican winning in New York State, Michael Lawler, a now a Republican congressman elect in the very congressional district where the residence of George Soros is, where the residence of Hillary Clinton is. You, you can't make this up. You've got- Yeah, and, and uh, the guy he beat, uh, Maloney, I think is his name. I'm, I'm trying to remember. I think it's Mahoney. But the guy he beat, Dean, he was head of the uh, the, the campaigns for, for the Republican, uh, excuse me, for the Democrat committee that, uh, what do they call those things? It's like a pack. That supports well, he's a state Democrat. Democratic uh, Party leader. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, Maloney, I believe, was his name. Yeah, he was. He was, he was um, forever. So this tells us that the citizens are voting their uh, the, that the 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 evidence of the um, citizens um, coming through with the, what was in what they intended is. Um, is spotty it's in different it's in areas around the nation where there is control and discipline over the voting process as compared to maricopa county Cary lake um where there seems to be a complete if it's not fraud it's certainly malfeasance or incompetence i mean go figure this poor Cary lake Katie Hobbs, who's the head of the election process, her opponent, fails to recuse herself out there. Uh, last night, the um, the uh, two nights ago, I should say, uh, uh, there was uh, Carrie Lake was down 15 percent. But last night by 8 p.m., she's down only two tenths of one percentage point with six hundred and fifty thousand votes uh, still to be counted in that state. Uh, yeah. she, if she, I think she'll get the, I think she'll get the job as governor. And when well, she they, does, they I say hope that she... where these votes are coming from Gene, that that's exactly right. That these votes are coming from a very conservative area. And as soon as they count those votes, this is going to put her over the top. I mean, everybody is saying that we will see. Yeah. Maricopa County, Phoenix, 
you know, uh, Carrie Lake said, uh, we're going to work through corruption and incompetence in the election system because it's gone too far. Well, hey, if you don't take my amendment that I'm suggesting, uh, then uh, just copy and paste what uh, Ron DeSantis did in Florida. Exactly. Ron DeSantis showed us how to do it. And, uh, you know, look, let's be honest. I mean, you've got a great uh, secretary of state down there. You've got a great attorney general. Florida is humming and uh, cooking with oil down there. They are doing a great job. And by the way, I wanted to mention before I forget, you know, unfortunately, Florida is uh, is one of those places in the world that is just apt to get a hurricane here or there. And you guys got hit again last night. What do you know about that, if anything? Yeah, it's just off the east coast of Florida now, and it is a Category 1 coming up on 75 miles an hour. It's um, <clears throat> barreling its way through the um, Daytona area south toward um, Palm Beach. But, boy, um, we've had our share. I must say just Governor DeSantis has uh, really uh, – we've, we've, we've sharpened our pencil. We've got our act together on storms over here now. Uh, the guy can – uh, uh, just unleashes the contractors and says, go build a bridge uh, and has the bridges back up in, in, in order in less than five working days. Um, we've got systems in place for recovery now. It's impossible for me to believe that that bridge got built that fast. I mean, I, I want to see evidence. I want somebody to send me a picture well, of that because it's yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't the, the Skyway Bridge in St. Petersburg area in, in, in Tampa. <laughs> it was more of the, you know, little span bridge going out to an island, uh, Sanibel yeah. Island. Okay. But but yeah, it's I mean, still, it, it was still a major task. Uh, a, lot of, uh, uh, speci- a lot of good disciplines are in place when you have good leadership. And Ro- Senator Ron Johnson held on in Wisconsin. He always demonstrated good leadership. Um, I, 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 I'm so proud when the Speaker of the House uh, gets on board as well, uh, that they um, send um, send uh, Ms. Pelosi packing. She's got an excuse now. She's better stay at home and take care of her husband. Watch, watch her language. That'll be her excuse to uh, justify sailing off into the sunset if Biden doesn't appoint her as some sort of ambassador to Italy. Uh, There's so many different um, things that we need to correct, but the biggest one is leadership. We've got to get the right leadership in place. I've been silent about um, about the impeachment process. Let's see what the Republicans do on the impeachment of uh, President Biden. Uh, I um, I don't think it's a, a vindictive or a revengeful thing. I think it's just truly incompetence on this gentleman's part. He needs to be removed for office. I think the national security of this nation is at risk, and your velvet hammer has spoken. Yeah, 30 seconds left. You hit it just right. Uh, so there's a lot of things that this Congress is going to do. And frankly, I would be happy to send Nancy Pelosi to Italy. Let's let's send her over there. I'm I'm happy with that. Well, I could name a half dozen more, including Adam Schiff, Eric Swalwell, uh, and uh, another <laughs> half dozen. It's They've hurt well this planned. nation. <laughs> All right. That's it. Uh, Gene Valentino, the Velvet Hammer, has spoken today. We appreciate you joining us on Thursday instead of Friday. But uh, – Thanks for joining us in any case, and we will see you again next week. Thank you, buddy. Enjoy your time tomorrow with Brian.